Hey guys, it's Aoife from Fred Weasley Died Laughing and I'm here today with my end of May wrap up. Now I did do a halfway through May wrap up so most of the books I read in May are from there. So between that wrap up and now I have managed to read five books. I literally just finished the last book of the month um, a few moments ago. So I've decided to do my wrap up now. Um, so the first book that I read after my other wrap up was Chantress by Amy Butler Greenfield. This was a pretty surprising book for me. I actually really enjoyed it. I wasn't really expecting a lot from it, um, but it ended up being a really, really enjoyable read. And it's basically about a girl called Lucy who has been in a... Um, she's basically been on an island for a majority of her life with just her guardian. And um, she believes that her mom died in a shipwreck, which ended with her and her guardian ended up on this island forever. And the only thing Lucy ever knows is that she's not allowed to sing, like ever. She's never allowed to hum never allowed to sing, just never allowed to even think about singing, it's just not allowed and she doesn't really know why. And then eventually it turns out that she does sing and she ends up being whisked away from this island she ends up in the middle of um, England. And uh, turns out that she is a chantress, which is basically kind of like a witch, but she can make magic through song so true she needs to learn how to sing certain songs to be able to make certain spells happen and um, which is pretty interesting and she ends up uh, kind of going on this adventure and trying to learn more about her abilities and wanting to rid the world of these kind of demon kind of creatures that have basically killed off every other sh uh, Chantress so as far as she knows she's the only one left so um it's it was really really good it was very um fast read as well I, I went through pretty quickly um so I gave that one uh three stars but I could almost even give it a 3.5 stars um I liked it and then my next one was one of my new favorite authors was 13 Weddings by Page Toon and I'm sure you guys have heard me rave about some of other uh, books by Page Toon like um, Chasing Daisy and Johnny Be Good. So this one was 13 Weddings and it is about a girl called Bronte and she is Australian and she comes over to England for a hen night for her best friend and she ends up meeting this guy and they have this immediate chemistry and um, it turns out that he's on like a break from his girlfriend and they end up having a one night stand and they don't think Ellen's going to come off it because she has to go back to Australia. And then he ends up getting a text from his girlfriend so he has to go off to her and it's a real kind of Rachel Ross, we were on a break kind of thing. And um, But it then comes a year later and Bronte's over in England for um, kind of a year long work visa and lo and behold who's working with her but Alex the guy that she slept with and again the chemistry is there he's engaged now so she doesn't know what to do it's just really awkward she's trying to be his friend she doesn't know whether she's in love with him or not um and she ends up becoming a photographer for um weddings and so that's the whole 13 weddings she does 13 weddings through the whole book and uh, I really really enjoyed this again um it kind of dealt with different issues you know like whether is chemistry enough is sometimes chemistry too much like can it kind of burn out um is it too dangerous sometimes is love enough like um you know if you've been together for someone for so long does that you know does that really go above someone who you have a really really amazing chemistry with what should you do um she also has kind of some issues with her parents which are dealt with which um I think were pretty good uh, it didn't really go into a whole lot of depth until the end of the book but you can tell through the whole book that she has some sort of issue with her parents so you find out more about that and then as well she did a really good um kind of subplot in it with her friend with one of her friends where she was kind of being told like this girl isn't your friend anymore you shouldn't be friends with this girl and I think that's a really important message to have in a book because I think friend friendship breakups are also a big part of someone's life like and I think that to have something like that in a book that lets people the readers know sometimes it's okay to take a step back from a friendship if it's not healthy for you and I think that was a really really good point as well that was done in the book and then the next book that I read was Malice by John Gwynn. And this is the first book of, I think it's The Fallen and The something. Uh oh. The Faithful and The Fallen. <laughs> I forgot that for a minute. The Faithful and The Fallen, which is basically about this land called the Banished Lands. And there's all these different kingdoms in this land. And then they all have different kings, but then there's one high king over this whole thing. There's basically the whole the whole book 
at the moment is they're trying to figure out if this prophecy is coming through where there is kind of this bright star who is supposed to help you know the whole kingdom come together or something like that and there's a young boy called Corbin who seems to be kind of the four character in it um it's about him kind of growing up learning how to be a soldier and um, different things that he does that earns respect from people much older than him and then you have loads of different other characters you have the the high king's uh, son the prince and his you know he kind of gets this thing in his head that he is the bright star and he has this really really um faithful warrior called veridis and that's not natar and veridis i'm not really sure if that's exactly how you say their names but um, i actually quite enjoyed their friendship i almost kind of felt it was almost like there was like a group chemistry between them it's almost like is something going to happen between them like which i wouldn't have minded if it did because it was actually kind of this relationship where you could almost see it happening so um i was kind of waiting for that but <laughs> um so if anyone else read that book let me know if you think there was a chemistry between those two characters as well because i thought there was um but it basically it, there's loads of different character um uh povs in it and um it is it's quite easy after a while it's quite easy to follow along you might think you get a bit confused with all the characters but um it's not that bad and you can see different different uh chapters all kind of lining up eventually and you can see where they all fit in together and they all kind of meet other characters um at different stages and i gave it four four out of five stars so and i'm going to continue on with the series as well because i think it's pretty interesting i think it's going to be pretty good and if anyone's fans of game of thrones or anything like that um you should just check it out because it is pretty good pretty good and then the next one is actually i have one i still have a physical copy for which is a royal likeness by christine trent and i did like this book um i felt the while the events in the book are quite fast paced like it goes through a few years all of a sudden um i thought that the uh the reading itself was a little bit slow i felt like i should have been more into the book at certain stages where i was only like a quarter of the way through i felt like i should be halfway through and um, so i just felt like i was reading it quite slowly um now it did change halfway through once a bit more action appeared in the book um, and then it, it became a faster read for me which I enjoyed and I enjoyed the second half better than the first half. So basically this is about a girl called Marguerite. She is French born but English raised and her she is a doll maker and unfortunately her husband dies at the very start of the book and she kind of loses what she needs to do in life. She doesn't really know whether she wants to basically stay alive anymore without her husband. And her aunt sends her away to become an apprentice to Madame Tussaud. And I think everyone knows who Madame Tussaud is. She is very famous for the waxwork. Um, the waxwork uh, exhibitions that are around different countries all over the world. So this Madame Tussaud, this is who she goes to apprentice with and she learns how to be an apprentice, learns how to do the waxworks, um, kind of gives her a bit more life, something to live for. And then, you know, she's a few different um, romantic entanglements with a few men. And there were two men in it. There was uh, Darndon Hastings and Brax Selwyn. And they reminded me so much of um, Mr. Darcy and Mr. Bingley. Because Hastings is kind of dark and brooding and he's very grumpy. But then he has this sweetness behind him that I think Darcy has. And then where Selwyn is kind of, he's a lot more lighthearted and he jokes and laughs and teases and stuff. And I found that that was much more Mr. Bingley. So I, I enjoyed that when I realised I made the connections in my head. Um, so and as well I think it's always really amazing when an author is able to create now uh, before I should probably say that I should say that there's a little bit of a subplot in this with um, Lord Nelson who is quite a famous British historical figure um, and he is in this book and I think it is so special when an author can create this fictional character stick them in these historical events and make it seem like you know that they should be there and like it's so real and you're almost like looking back in history looking for marguerite and her you know her involvement in these different historical events and i think that was amazing i think she really did it really really well so i really enjoyed that one so i gave this 3.5 stars and then the last thing that i read was cleo by lucy i can't remember the name now Lucy Coates. I kept thinking Lucy Waters for some reason, but that's not right. It's Lucy Coates. Cleo by Lucy Coates. And I got this as an arc from NetGalley. Cleo is basically about Cleopatra, um, a young Cleopatra, and her mother dies, and her sisters are out together, so she runs away from um, the palace, I guess you could say. The Pharaoh's palace, or the Pharaoh's, you know, uh, 
where they live and uh, she kind of becomes a priestess of Isis who is the god that looks after her and she has a special connection with this god and she has to go back after a few years and try and you know uh, get things right re- re- like kind of reclaim her goddess's power because her goddess is becoming quite weak and she needs to help her goddess with certain things and uh, try and defeat her evil so sisters is what she calls them evil so sisters but um I was a bit disappointed with this book. I thought it would be better. Um, it has a gorgeous cover. Um, the concept of it is quite interesting. But I felt... Now at the very start of the book, Cleo is only 10. And you can tell that she's 10 because like, the whole... It kind of starts off in this big massive rant against everyone. Um, and I didn't really like that. It was kind of... It was just a bad bad place to start with the book. Of was a rant, like a childish rant. Um, so it didn't really endear me to Cleo straight away and actually I, I didn't really connect with her at all I didn't really feel sorry for her because I felt she was rather the whole book despite bad things happening to her I still felt she was kind of privileged and spoilt and she kind of expected different things and I didn't really like it and um, she was quite juvenile the whole way through even though it's four years later she's supposed to be 14. In my head she keeps appearing 16 even though she does sound younger. I keep thinking of her as older in my head even though her voice itself is young. I don't know why but I think I think it might be because she has different feelings for this boy that she's only seen like twice and apparently she's in love with which I always hate in a book that like you know they see one, a, a boy once and suddenly they're madly in love and it was like she had like different like stomach melting dreams about this boy when she's only like 10 and I'm like okay like that's a little bit young to be having those kind of dreams like maybe I'm being a bit of a prude when I say that but I didn't really like it um and even at 14 I think it's a bit young that's why I think I kept thinking of her as 16 because her feelings about this boy itself was a little bit mature so I kept thinking that she was a bit older than she actually was and it didn't it kind of ended at an annoying point as well I kind of thought that it could have been a little bit longer and they could have just wrapped it up there but they didn't, or sorry, that she didn't, the author didn't, but um, which was a bit annoying. So yeah, I don't know if I'll read the second book, if there is going to be a second book. Um, I think I'll have to see, I'll have to think about it, but for now, no. I'll give it two stars, yeah, about two stars, between two stars and 2.5 stars. I'm not really sure it merits a three star in my opinion, so I think I'm going to leave it at a two star. So yeah, those were the books that I read in May and um, I will be doing a June TBR in a little bit and I'll probably upload that as well straight after this one, so we'll see. Okay, so thanks for watching and um, subscribe if you like what you see and let me know what you guys are reading or what you have read and what you thought of it because I want to know. Okay, bye!